Hi guys, Light here. In today's video, we're gonna check out iOS 14.4 on the iPhone SE. So there are only a few changes here on iOS 14.4 and here are some of the stuff that you need to know. So the first change is that if you are using AirPods or even the AirPods Pro or even just the classic wired earpods that come with your iPhone or even if you do have the new AirPods Max or anything that is part of the Apple ecosystem, chances are you might be familiar with the headphone audio levels section here on the health app, which basically tells you the range of decibels that you are listening to, whether if you are listening to music that is within the safe zone or if you are listening to music that is too loud which is similar to the feature that we have here available on the Apple Watch, which is noise detection, which warns you if you are in an environment that is too loud that might end up damaging your hearing. But going back to the headphone audio levels here on iOS, Apple wants to expand this feature to other headphones as well. Well, other audio devices. So if we go inside settings, and if we go inside Bluetooth, and if you do have all your devices paired with your device you should be now able to set the device type for that like this one for my bluetooth speaker as you can see it is set as a speaker and there are many options that we could choose from from car stereo headphone hearing aid speaker or other which is nice if you do specify the type of device so your device could ensure the headphone audio levels would be measured accurately so in my case, I will be checking out some of the devices that I have paired. So like this one, I have here a Defunct Bluetooth Plus, which is a headphone. So it's already accurately detected by this device as a headphone. So there's no need for us to adjust that. But in the event that that is wrong, you could always set it up to the proper device type for that device. Like what we did. Which the adjustments that we do make would be helpful for the health app right here. So it could calibrate whether it's a headphone, a speaker, or something else. So it could go ahead and determine if we are listening to music within the safe range or if we are listening to music that is too loud that might end up damaging our hearing. So we could get alerts for that. Which you could always configure inside settings. If you scroll down to sounds and haptics. And right here we have headphone safety and we have here the notifications and of course you could also adjust the headphones maximum volume which your iPhone can analyze the headphone audio and reduce any sound that is over that set decibel level which would be kind of useful for all audio devices like this one from Belkin the true wireless earpods which will also have here the new Apple find my integration and speaking of Apple Find My, if we go ahead and open Safari and we go to this link, which if we go ahead and open that link, it would prompt you to open the Find My application where you get here a preview of the upcoming Find My Items feature on the app. Which if we tap here Add Item, as you can see right here, we get here this small pop-up here on the bottom, which we have there the icon of a bag, a luggage, and a headphone. Which is kind of nice since we do get a preview of the upcoming features we have for iOS. And if you are running iOS 14.3 or above, you could go ahead and scan this QR code for you to try it out. Also, if you do have a HomePod with the U1 chip or later, you should be able to get new handoff improvements for the HomePod once the HomePod update has been released. Also, if you do have an Apple Watch paired with your iPhone and it is compatible with watchOS 7.3, we do get a new watch face which is Unity as you can see right here which you can set the color and other stuff. So if you go ahead and add that to your Apple Watch, it should look like this. Also, in line with watchOS 7.3, if you do live in Japan, Mayotte, Philippines, or even Thailand, we now finally get the ECG app available on Apple Watch Series 4 or later or if you do have a watch that has a built-in ECG scanner. So we could finally now get an ECG directly on our wrist. And for Apple Watch SE users, don't worry, our Apple Watch is still pretty awesome. And in iOS 14.4 comes improvements when scanning QR codes. 
So when you're scanning a small QR code, your device should be able to easily handle that. And if you do remember the new app privacy labels that we have available on the App Store, and if you do encounter an app that has data used to track you, well, according to the Apple developer documentation on user privacy and data use, if we do have data to track you, we should give you a prompt similar to this one, which allows the user to select if they want to allow tracking or they could ask the app not to track which this is an awesome privacy feature to have in our iOS device. Now running a performance test first using Geekbench on the iPhone SE, we do get a score of 1,326 for single core and 3,326 for multi-core, where if we compare that from the previous update, we got the score of 1,335 for single core and 3,040 for multi-core. But going back to the recent update, if we go ahead and check out the single core scores, as you can see we are slightly higher than the average iPhone SE, and in multi-core scores we are still higher than the average iPhone SE. And running another performance test using Antutu Benchmark, we do get a score of 469,727 for iOS 14.4, while comparing that from the previous update, we got the score of 486,930 on iOS 14.3. So that is it guys, those are just some of the little changes available on iOS 14.4. How about you guys, have you spotted any other changes? Please let us know in the comment box below. And as always guys, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more.